When I first started photography, I was always looking to try and capture the crisp shot, the money shot, the shots that just look somehow not real, but they look really good, right? And obviously like everybody else, when I first started, I used just a stock lens on the camera that I bought. I think I bought a Nikon D something, D5000. I don't even remember what I had, but I just used a stock lens. And after a while, I did some more research and I was like, I want to level up my shots. And I went ahead and bought a 50 millimeter 1.8. And then I thought this was the end all be all, but I still wasn't happy. So after some discussion with my friend Ryan, he put me onto this lens, which I'm currently shooting on. It's the Sigma 35 millimeter F 1.4 fixed prime lens. And this lens, let me tell you, this lens has changed my whole photography portfolio. How so, you may ask? The capability of this lens, especially for portrait photographers, is unparalleled. And for the price point, I don't think there's a better lens on the market. So today I'm gonna to give you the advice that I wish I got when I first started photography, especially in portrait photography, but it works in all subjects. This lens is all you need, it's all I own for just still photography. And I'll show you why it's so great at its price point, but also the versatility that it has in terms of portrait photography. Trust me, once you buy this, you're not gonna to wanna to go back. All right, all right. Let's get right into this. So before I jump into the actual images, I wanna talk about the actual lens itself. And boy, this guy, this is a heavy lens. So this lens, according to the website, it says it's 665 grams for the Sigma mount and 775 grams for the Sony mount. So I actually first initially purchased the Sigma mount, which I used on my Canon 60 prior to my Sony a7 III. And afterwards, instead of selling it the Sigma mount and buying a Sony mount, I decided to get an adapter. So I got a mount converter, the MC11 specifically, and it was about 150 bucks, I think, 100 bucks or something like that. So I kept my lens from my Canon, added the mount converter, and switched over to the Sony system. Anyways, this lens is heavy. It is so heavy. One of the reasons why I wanted to switch to Sony in the first place is my Canon 60 was so freaking heavy all the time. Like my back hurt, my backpack was always heavy on shoots. I couldn't just really take it out for a day because the whole system was just too heavy, like literally. This is like carrying around a two liter water bottle. It's so heavy. That's the only downside I have, to be honest, the only downside. Moving on to positives, this lens is a beast. It's got autofocus, manual focus. I only use manual focus typically for portrait photography. I go ahead and set up with my focus peaking, but the autofocus was really good on my Canon. When I added the MC11 converter, the autofocusing still works in the Sony, but it's a little bit slow, just a tad. It, it does great, but it's a little slow and it also makes sort of like a, a ticking noise as it autofocuses. So unless you have an external mic, if you're just using audio from your camera, I wouldn't, necessarily recommend this for video unless you're using sort of external mic. In terms of video, this thing also doesn't miss. It takes great video. The image quality is superb. The selling point obviously about this lens is the 1.4 aperture. It is such a good aperture to highlight specific elements in perhaps portrait photography today or other product photography, which I'll show later in this video. If you're wondering what this is, this is just a sticker I added on the lens hood to give it a little character. Besides that, I always keep the hood on just to protect it from any scratches. I actually lost the lens cap, probably should buy one, a little lazy. I've had this lens for five years now, I believe, four or five years. And to be honest, this is the only lens that I use for photography besides the fisheye that I just bought. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the exact images that this lens takes. I didn't alter the bokeh in the background of any of these photos. The only thing I did was add my preset pack, which is below 25% off if you use code FILM25 for a limited time, little plug. But I only added my own personal presets in Lightroom to change the coloring of these photos. Besides that, I mean, besides that, I, I edited them, but just the colors. In terms of the sharpness, which I wanna to highlight today, and also the bokeh, these are the things that I wanna show you which will change your portrait photography and your product photography from now on. So let's hop right into it. So as we move through these images, let me just talk about some recurring themes that I noticed in the photos that I've taken with this lens. First of all, a note of clarification, all of these photos that I'm about to show are all shot at f1.4. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, wow, that is ridiculous. Why would you do that? That is stupid. F2, f2.2, f2.8 will do the job for you. I don't know. I just like f1.4. It gives a really strong break between your background and your subject while also retaining some sort of I guess atmosphere from the background. So in these first few images, you can tell that the subject is clearly, clearly displaced from the background. This brings a sense of emphasis to what you want to highlight in your images. Specifically, this one of John, when you have images in the foreground and you focus on your subject, I can highlight the person, in this sense, John, 
from his surroundings while also keeping his surroundings in, you know, a good enough sort of sharpness, like f.95 would might be too much, but when you have a fixed 35 millimeter prime lens, you can position yourself in different ways that allow you to highlight subjects very well. One of the benefits I feel with 35 millimeter lenses or fixed prime lenses is although a lot of people don't really enjoy not being able to zoom, I think that as a photographer, it's your job to position yourself in places that allow you to get your best shot, specifically in portrait photography. While this may not be the best sense in terms of, for instance, sports events or live concerts where you can't get on the pitch, for instance, or you can't get up close and personal right up at the front, close enough to where you can get your subjects features with just 35 millimeter lens. When you have the ability to shoot, for instance, your friends or you're on set at a shoot and you have the ability to get up close and personal with your subjects, this allows you to capture intimate moments, which to be fair, you probably could do this with an 85 millimeter lens, but when your subject notices you and also reacts in a way that allows you to capture certain emotions that they normally wouldn't show otherwise, this allows you to get sort of an interesting shot that you may not otherwise get. I think one of the things that you can tell in these images that's sort of a recurring theme is I like to place images in the foreground or position myself where some foreground elements cover parts of the image that allows you to give sort of a larger depth of field to your image, which in the end highlights your subject more profoundly. For instance, here in this photo of Kazu, I placed uh, myself kind of lower, closer to the table where images in the foreground would kind of blur the bottom area of this photo and it would highlight Kazu in the background pouring his coffee. Similarly, by placing myself in between this tray, which was housing uh, barber items, I gave another sense of depth to this image where you're almost like you're one of the tools uh, watching this barber give a fade. Again, when you use the focusing in interesting ways or perhaps unorthodox ways, this large depth of field, you can actually use certain subjects that would perhaps be in focus with other lenses. Using this 1.4 depth of field to your advantage in creating interesting portraits is another great feature that you can take a hold of. I think you can tell a recurring theme with a lot of these images is I like to get very up close and personal. Um, I don't have too much variation of like full body photos, but you can. These work out very well for full body photos as well. I usually take portraits kind of from like the waist up, the bust up, and I like to try and highlight sort of facial emotions or perhaps a subject in their environment, which is my favorite type of portrait photography. Again, placing items in the foreground to sort of cover up areas of the subject gives an added sense of depth that you can include in your photos. Um, this is not just for portrait photography, but in all these instances, these add a depth of sort of atmosphere to these portraits, which kind of is recurring in my, my photography at least. Okay, so a few more images that I just wanted to show are sort of product images or not people, but sort of items that you wanna highlight in perhaps commercial photography or just photos for your friends or your friends' brands. This lens does a great job of capturing those as well. Again, I shot these all at f1.4. I didn't really crop any of these, to be honest. These are all kind of just what was shown in the frame. Having a full frame camera, it does wonders. But yeah, I think using this lens to its potential and utilizing the 1.4 aperture is the best way to use this lens. I probably wouldn't shoot this lens at 3.5 very often just because I have the capability and that's sort of the style that I enjoy. I know it's not the style that everybody enjoys. You can use this lens in other ways as well, but in terms of my personal experiences of the last five years using this lens, these are my favorite style of images. So some takeaways from this. A, this lens is heavy as hell. It's like a two liter water bottle. It's not light. It's not easy to carry around. That's a negative. In terms of positives, it's built like a brick. This thing will not break on you, at least it hasn't broken on me. You'd have to like run it over with a car in order to destroy it. I treat my gear not very well. I kind of just throw out my backpack and it's held up incredibly well over the last five years. I apologize if this video didn't go into the lens specifications too much. Uh, I mean, you can Google all the information. I just wanted to show you exactly how it performs in the field. Definitely in terms of positives, however, I think this is the best in terms of price point for portrait photographers. This lens currently runs from anywhere around $650 to about $800 with or without perhaps different accessories. I actually purchased my lens on eBay. I got a really good deal for it back in 20, what, 2016, 27, I think 2016. Obviously used camera and used camera part websites are fantastic for getting cheaper deals on great products that aren't used too heavily. But yeah, again, in terms of 
lenses in general, this is the only lens I basically use for any sort of photography. For video, I use the Tamron 17 to 28, but I don't use a Tamron lens for photos usually. I'm not really a big fan of how the images look on this lens. Recently, I've been using the fisheye lens as well, which you can check out the review right here. However, in terms of professional and also just portrait photography for friends, for family, I think you should look no further than this lens. There may be better lenses out there. I may be naive. If you know any better ones, go ahead and link them below, put them in the comments. I'll go ahead and check them out. I really appreciate you guys always interacting with me. Go ahead, please, please click that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. I really appreciate it. I am going to be posting hopefully two videos a week from this point on, maybe more. So go ahead and stay tuned for that. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.